Behold the clockwork city, the throne aligned, the omni-axle, the brass-throat herald of joyful destruction, the oil-slick tower of seamless assembly. Do you not hear the whir of the gears, the hiss of the pistons? Obsidian towers stretch ever skyward, festooned with polished brass and godly filigrees. Great turbines drive memory through a thousand thousand pipes that stretch out like tangled veins or the golden roots of an ageless tree. The Clockwork City is the grandest display of architecture, engineering, artisanry, and civic wonder Nern has ever seen. And much like the realm's creator, Sofa Sil, the horological city is rich in beauty for the faithful, and alight with sublime terror for the servants of chaos. Sofa Sil is the mainspring ever wound, and his creations are always a perfect science. The Clockwork City is a remarkable combination between the mystique of the arcane arts and the precise rhythm of the pendulum, the ticking hands, the millions of parts operating in exact sequence. For if one intricate piece of the system were to fail, the whole mechanism would be made obsolete. Welcome, traveller, to the greatest city in the Elder Scrolls. But before you can learn about the history of this wondrous realm, you must first learn how to get there. Would you believe me if I told you this city I speak of is no larger than your common netch? Yes, child of the tribunal, you heard right. I'm talking about those organic undulating sacks of meat and magical gas that float listlessly among the parasol mushrooms of Morrowind. In the material world, the clockwork city is no larger than a netch. Before you even set foot in the brass metropolis, you need to open your mind to the magics at play here. The realm itself is not part of our perceived space and time. It is a metaphysical plane meticulously crafted by Sofa Sil to replicate the mythic structures of Nern in metallic miniature. But whatever you do, Traveller, do not call the Clockwork City a replica of Nern in front of Set himself. The wizard god of the tribunal does not waste his time and expertise designing imitations. Everything you see inside the city is not Nern's reflection, but Nern's refinement. The mortal realm was created from chaos, from an ambiguous genesis. The Clockwork City, however, was created by Set's steady hand, a glorious coalescence of nature and engineering. You can probably tell, then, why such a grand construction could not be undertaken on Nern proper. How could you recreate something within the confines of that thing? There simply wouldn't be enough space. So Set built it outside of the mortal realm, and created a physical gateway to it. Hence the physical size of the city being that of a netch. This netch-sized object is actually an ornate clockwork globe, and requires every traveller to be magically shrunk prior to entry. This globe is sealed within two vaults. One must locate the waterfall in the Tribunal Temple, which conceals the first entrance. Then navigate the caverns beneath the city of Mournhold before accessing the ancient Dwemer ruin named Bams Amshend. Within this ruin is Set's vault, which in turn houses the magnificent feat of craftsmanship used to enter the Clockwork City. Other means of entering the city are rumoured to exist, like portals beneath the city of Ebonheart, or in the swamps near the city of Tyr, and even a magic rift that ripped open in the bowels of Tel Fear. A powerful Dunmer mage named Barrel Zar also created an artifact known as the Mazed Band, which allowed the wearer to teleport directly into the city, bypassing vaults, shrinking, and rifts altogether. After the Battle of Red Mountain between the Chimer and the Dwemer in the First Era 700, the Tribunal ascended to demigodhood. So Fasil had always been a reclusive, studious type. But with such increases to his power, he saw the potential to create something truly magnificent. It was around this time in the first era when Set began drawing up the schematics for his impressive new realm. It had always been the way of the Kaima to view mortality and the mortal realm as a challenge to overcome, and Sofa Sil certainly demonstrated his ability to follow Boethia's teachings. Not only did he use the heart of Lorcan to achieve immortality, but he also looked at the Adric creation with all its flaws, and strived to recreate it, and perfect it. He aimed to build Tamriel's redemption, to unify opposing forces, to destroy the Daedra, and in forging the future for mortals, he would call it Tamriel Final, or Second Nern. Here the chaotic forces would have no foothold, and everything would function by design, precisely as intended. 
There is no doubt that Sofacil took great inspiration from Dwemer technology. After all, he spent most of his waking hours appraising Kagranak's tools after the race's disappearance. Even earlier, he had dabbled in tonal architecture and designed clockwork dregs inspired by Dwemer automatons for use in battle. He saw firsthand just how ambitious they were, only he found the missing piece of the machine, the one that allowed ambition to flourish without the threat of extinction. He made attuning the heart possible, completing Chief Tonal Architect Kagranak's work, and the Clockwork City was his next endeavor. In order to make the Clockwork City as expansive as he had planned, Set worked on perfecting diminution magic, allowing every creation to exist in miniature form. So Fasil was always endowed with attention to detail, and even in full size his creations would require a surgeon's accuracy. In miniature his creations were somehow more fascinating, as he could condense enough detail into a small space to rival the intricacies of the human brain. But how could a miniature copy maintain realistic laws of physics and natural topography? Well, the entire realm was surrounded by an elaborate glass dome called the Celestiodrome. The inner surface of this dome mimics the night and day cycles of Mundus, and the rotating girders within create the realm's topography. Then Set created the Halls of Regulation, which could achieve the humidity required to support biotic life. It generated the water cycle, breathable air, temperature, wind, even pure drinkable water. So for Sil was living up to his role as a god to the Dunma. He could recreate the most essential ingredient to life. And Set's brilliant feats didn't end here. He built the mnemonic planisphere, which would serve as an extension of his consciousness, storing his memories in the form of stars. There's also the Radius, which incorporates the regions surrounding the city. Here, the various biomes of Tamriel are replicated. Where the Radius ends, the Brass Fortress begins. This is the inhabited, metropolitan part of the Clockwork City, right at the realm's heart. At least the heart of the surface, anyway, because beneath the fortress there are the maintenance tunnels called the Mechanical Fundament. This is where the real magic lies. Like the face of a clock, the Brass Fortress is but the visible side of a magnificent machine. In the very center of everything, somewhere amidst the maintenance tunnels, lies the Cogitum Centralis, the axle that spins the wheel. And this is where you'll find Sofa Sil's seat of power, the mainspring ever wound on the throne aligned. When the sequestered demigod sought solitude, he would vanish into the folds of the Cogitum Centralis, sometimes for years, sometimes decades, even centuries at a time. Without inhabitants, what is a city? Unsurprisingly, Sofacil's creation attracted followers, and the Clockwork Apostles began as an order devoted to assisting in Set's work. They were always magically gifted, skilled tinkerers, and prone to replacing their own body parts with advanced mechanical improvements. To the Apostles, doing so is an expression of faith in the Father of Mysteries. They seek one end, a time when Nern itself is replaced by the Clockwork City. But not every citizen needed to be wholly devoted to the metaphysical elements of Set's creation and there were plenty of skills unrelated to the apostles that were needed to keep a society functioning. Every individual cog in the machine plays its part after all, not just the largest ones. Merchants, craftsmen, adventurers, and much more, these dwellers were referred to as the Auxiliaries. Our next group of inhabitants prove that even Sofa Sil can't create a utopia. The Clockwork City may be a synthetic upgrade to the real Nern, but every civilization has its undesirables, also known as the lower class. Yes, here in the Clockwork City, where everything is well maintained and polished to a perfect sheen, the poorer settlers are referred to as the Tarnished. These unskilled settlers are cast out and live in the slums of Slag Town. I think it would be fair to assume that this class disparity likely came about during one of Set's long withdrawals into the Cogitum Centralis. In such times, the Clockwork Apostles, mortals despite their rank, clearly neglect the less skilled citizens. If you ask the tarnished folk, they'd tell you as much, claiming the Apostles have abandoned them. The last group of inhabitants you'll find are the Exodromals, which means someone who comes from beyond the Celestiodrome. Exodromals are either temporary visitors or immigrants looking for sponsorship to acquire complete citizenship. Most of these exodromals were part of the latter category, as most visitors had no means of ever returning to Tamriel. A portal back to the mainland does exist, and is called the Doors of Aggress. Yet the Clockwork Apostles do not share this critical information with new arrivals. To some, the majesty of the Clockwork City is cause enough to reconcile their inability to leave, as the privilege to live there at all is a miracle. To others, it is an unceasing nightmare, like an ostentatious brass cage. Is beauty a consolation when you have no choice but to stay 
stare at it for eternity. Much like every other facet of the Clockwork City, the fauna is an amalgamation of organic and mechanical materials. The many animals wandering the radius are known as fabricants, partially thanks to their natural elements, but mostly due to good design. These synthetic beasts emulate the forms and behaviours of real life forms. In place of a heart, you'll find a soul gem. There are also the completely artificial factotums, humanoid constructions with a variety of purposes ranging from the mundane to the marvellous. Some clean the streets and maintain infrastructure, others provide security, or even act as bards, displaying an extraordinary simulation of true creativity. As with all of Sofacil's creations, the Dwemer inspiration is clear, but taken a step further. The dwarves failed and left the world, but Set and his technologies thrive. The Clockwork City's greatest achievement is the ability to appear entirely natural, with seemingly infinite complexity, while simultaneously, little of it is truly real. Prior to the Second Era, the Clockwork City was busy being constructed and establishing its population, but it soon became host to a number of key events. The first major Tamrielic power to notice the potential of Set City was the Morag Tong in the Second Era 582. Since they were forced into hiding following the assassination of the Akaviri potentates, a few members wished to restore the guild to its former glory. In order to achieve the goal, they needed two powerful devices of Sofa Sil's invention. A smuggler successfully entered the city and stole one of these artifacts, but was eventually brought to justice. Only one year later, the triad of Daedra Lords, Clavicus Vile, Mafala, and Noctis plotted to gain access to the city. Vile and Barbus used a powerful staff created by Sofa Sil, Suna Ra, to steal the Vex divine energy and use it to locate the elusive citadel. Barbus entered successfully and began planning Vile's arrival, but not before their scheme could be stopped by the Soulless One. This year proved to be an eventful one, as at approximately the same time, Dive Fear discovered a portal beneath his Tower of Tel Fear, which had inexplicably opened and spewed dozens of fabricants and factotums from the Clockwork City into the caverns below. This apparent mishap led Dive Fear to begin studying the portal and paying attention to Sofa Sil's realm. While Clavicus Vile had failed his plan to take the Clockwork City, before even setting foot in the realm, Nocturnal was better prepared. She summoned a shadow of Sofa Sil and plotted to usurp the throne aligned with it. Meanwhile, one of the Clockwork Apostles was in possession of the Skeleton Key. This was stolen by Nocturnal's minions and delivered to Set's shadow. When the imposter made a play for the throne, the Soulless One and Dive Fear intervened. By removing the key from the throne aligned, Sofa Sil was awoken, and Nocturnal was banished. Almost 300 years later in Second Era 882, Dagoth Ur stirred from his slumber and interrupted the Tribunal's annual pilgrimage to Red Mountain. By preventing them from accessing the heart of Lorcan, the Tribunal would gradually grow weaker. So Sil's answer to this was to begin sketching the blueprints for a replacement heart, a mechanical replication. If he could recreate an enhanced Nern, why couldn't he do the same to the heart of Lorcan? But like its inspiration, the mechanical heart was dangerous and disobedient. To keep it from destroying the Clockwork City, Set was forced to design the equivalent to Kagranak's tools, to control and shape the heart's rhythmic energy. This heart proved to be a powerful energy source, but despite his brilliance, Set simply couldn't replicate the Doom Drum. With the loss of Kagranak's tools to Dagoth Ur in the 417th year of the Third Era, Sofa Sil became even more of a recluse. He became almost completely detached from the outside world and spent every waking hour in the Cogitum Centralis, working on his mechanical heart, hoping for a breakthrough. He knew, however, that he would not live to see its completion, for his close ally Almalek Alexia would betray him. Almalexia had not handled the waning of her divine power well. She longed to be the saviour and guardian of her people, yet every passing day she proved herself to be less competent. She was driven mad by it and projected this madness onto Set. She came to him in the pinnacle of his central chambers. When she came face to face with him, Sofa Sil was plugged into his control centre, in another state of consciousness. But whether he could speak or not did not matter. For Almalexia interpreted his silence as a mockery. Even in his death, he made her feel a fool. She murdered Sofa Sil, but not before he could seal off the heart chamber, allowing his machines to complete his work on the heart undisturbed. Almalexia released a horde of fabricants on her city of Mournhold to frame her old friend, and planned to be the hero. But her powers failed her, and she too was slain. 
in the words of Sofa Sill. She believes her tales implicitly, as does everyone else. Her capacity for deception appears limitless. She sows lies like a master gardener sows seeds, and the harvest of trust and adulation is breathtaking in scope. Almalexia does what she does because she cannot do otherwise. It will not end well, but then, even the best endings rarely bring joy. With the mainspring ever wound gone, prospects were grim for the Clockwork City. Thankfully though, his dying deed had paid off. The machines continued to work in his stead, and in the year 200 of the Fourth Era, the heart was completed. The heart powered the city and sustained all the life within, a task previously only possible for Sofa Sill. His realm started as an imitation, masterfully crafted but undeniably artificial. But with the creation of the mechanical heart, so powerful that it could continue Set's work indefinitely, providing breathable air, drinkable water, and a flourishing ecosystem, the Clockwork City was now as close to alive as a thing can get. True, it isn't naturally occurring, but it is completely self-sustaining, and hosts all manner of life forms. The Clockwork City is Sofa Sil's legacy. It's his answer to the flawed Adric creation. It's alive. The Clockwork City is no mere simulacrum. The copper leaves and sculpted hills are not Nern's resemblance, but Nern's refinement. Worldly forms made whole by the steady hand of the mainspring ever wound. The glorious unity of Tamriel Final demands convergence. Myrrh and machine made whole. Nature and engineering made whole. The past and the future made whole. Seek out the dry, hard places, child of Set. Anoint your tongue with his oil. Fill your stomach with his nourishing grain. Cast out what was and fix your eyes upon the Nern to come. Upon Tamriel Final. The clockwork city awaits. By the word, I wind the gears. And there you have it guys, Sofa Seal's Clockwork City. I hope you enjoyed the video, and honestly, this has to be my favourite part of lore added by ESO. Thanks so much for watching guys, my name is Drew, this is Fudge Muppet, and I'll see you in the next one.